Welcome to another program from the Carnegie Historical Museum here in Fairfield. I'm Gene Ludke, museum board member, and today we're going to talk about some things that we discovered up in the, uh, the storage room upstairs. Uh, when Parsons College closed in 1973, the museum inherited a number of different things from the Parsons College collection. And one of these things that was pointed out to me that I didn't know exists until Betty Schwingles told me was a box of lantern slides. Uh, these are early slides of uh, Pars mostly Parsons College views, but there are, we just did discover a few of uh, uh, Fairfield views among them. And literally, this is the box of slides right here. And John and I have not really looked through this box to know exactly what's in there. So we hope that there's going to be a few surprises. Helping give the program today is John Stimson. John uh, first came to Fairfield 22, 23 years ago, something like that. Uh, stayed for a while, left, and then came back 14 years ago and has been a resident of Fairfield since. Uh, John's interests are quite varied, but he likes a lot of the older style of uh, photography, printing, calligraphy, sign painting. Uh, he also does uh, Civil War reenactments. Uh, just this last weekend, he was in Princeton, Illinois at a uh, military style dance from Civil War era style thing. And so his interest in the past and history is quite varied, but he has a knowledge of these lantern slides. And so uh, we'll get started by John. What are lantern slides? Well, um, I'm sure everyone back in the 60s remembers the vacation slides that everyone took with the 35 millimeter film. Um, and this was the early version of those. People liked to have slideshows back at the turn of the century, just as they did uh, as in the 1960s. And now, of course, it's mostly home videos. But it's the same tradition and the same idea. A glass slide um, is the, the old version of the um, cardboard-mounted film slide. And uh, back at this time, the um, glass was a much more permanent, much more stable um, way of showing slides than the film of the time, which, was tend which tended to curl. And so they wanted to have a, a way of uh, producing these. Also, because the original photographic plates themselves were largely done on glass, it was easy to take um, a glass negative and put another piece of glass photographic material face to face with it and print a positive from the negative. Okay. okay, and so these are actually, they tend to be photographs of photographs. There would be a paper print that somebody had printed from the original film or glass negative. And then to produce these, they would re-photograph them. Okay. Okay, this is an example of a glass negative, which is just much like your photographic ne negatives that you have today. And uh, I do have a couple of these that John has printed for me, and they really do make sharp prints. Uh, do you want to say anything about the comparison of the two? Yeah. The reason that they make sharp prints is that the negatives that are made today tend to be very small. They tend to be about that big, which means that they have to be enlarged photographically, uh, optically, in order to give you a print that you can see at all. If you've ever seen a, a contact print from a 35 millimeter negative, it's very small. You, you wouldn't be able to, to uh, see anything. So they have to blow it up with a, something that's like a projector and then make a print from that. Whereas these, um, the prints that were made were generally the same size as this huge negative, which means that the detail and the, uh, the sense of depth in there was formidable. Um, the, there were problems, of course, with the glass negatives. They can break. Uh, they were also very expensive. And um, th the film emulsion, the, the, the sensitivity, was very slow. And it was only sensitive to blue light, which meant that colors would come out um, strangely. Uh, okay. mm -hmm. So we have the glass negatives, and then that's like printing a photograph. And then we have glass positive, which are just like a, they're actually what you see as right. far as a, right. uh, a, a photo or whatever. People understand that with, with a negative, the sky would come out dark, and any shadows would come out clear or, or light. And as we get into showing some, some slides, we're going to put both through the slide projector so you can see right. what the difference will be. Right. Okay. 
John, you've brought along some camera equipment. How were these made? Okay, the uh, original photographs would have been taken on site, of course, using one of a number of cameras. We have the box camera, which uh, I'm sure sure. most people are familiar with uh, from um, seeing um, movies or whatever where people people would be taking a picture. Generally, it was a box camera at the turn of the century. But the finer photographs were taken with a bellows camera or view camera, which, uh, here, I'll hold this up. This is from the museum collection here. This is a Zeiss Icon German view camera. It is um, a uh, very fine quality camera. The lens, the shutter, the film, everything in it were of superb quality for making um, the very fine portraits or um, landscapes. Um, the difference between this and that box camera, that box camera had no way of focusing and it had only two choices for different exposure settings. Whereas this is completely flexible and um, it has a couple of different viewing systems including the uh, what's called the ground glass. Could you hand me that right there? Yes. Yeah. The ground glass, uh, this museum camera here is, is jammed here. I can't get the film pack out of here. But this ground glass would go in place of the film. And when the shutter is open, you could actually see what you were going to be photographing. And you could adjust the focus and the aperture and uh, uh, a few other little uh, adjustments on here to get the photograph just the way you wanted before you put the film in and make the exposure. Um, the adjustments on here that you see uh, allow the lens itself to be moved in different ways so that you can correct for um, distortion in perspective. For instance, if you're taking a photograph of a building and pointing the camera up, it'll look as though the building is falling over because the lines converge like that. So this, if you raise the lens up, it corrects for that and it makes the building look straight. And so this is a very fine camera here. Uh, I have one like this at home that is, uh, has a film size of 8 by 10 inches. It's a very large camera. Uh, I didn't feel like bringing that one today. <laughs> but, uh, this camera is in the museum collection. I don't think we know where it came from, but obviously, I think quite obviously, it was probably a, F a Fairfield photographer of some sort. But I don't think our records show who used it in Fairfield. We know of. We know of three photographers, professional photographers here in town, although there are probably many more. Brown, Williams, and Gilchrist, right? Gilchrist, yes. Gilchrist. Yeah. Browning, Browning, excuse me, Browning, yes. There were a number of different ones that, mm -hmm. um, uh, and I guess that's another program at some point when we're right. ready to yes. talk about that. Yeah, next fall we're having to ha hoping to have a program on uh, a much more technical demonstration of how photography was done at the turn of the century. And talk yeah. more about Fairfield photographers right. in the past. Yes, they, the actual photographers. So um, the film or glass plates would be put into holders. Yeah, this is a, an <laughs> actual unexposed, well it's exposed now, but an undeveloped glass plate. Uh, it has this creamy colored emulsion on there and um, it would fit into a film holder, and you'd have to do this in the dark room, like that. And then the dark slide would be put in there, like that. And then it was safe to carry it out into the light. Then you would put it into the camera. Once you had done all the focusing on the ground glass, you'd put this into the camera, take this out, make your exposure, put the uh, slide back in, and you would lock it like that so that you would know that and that was the that time was exposure hmm? that was the time exposure the time that mm -hmm. you would instead of today's uh, 60th of a second or whatever no, or is that different? That, that's a separate thing you would you would open this out with the shutter still closed okay. then you would make your exposure and you know open and shut the the uh, shutter and then you would put this back in so that you could take this film holder out and put another film holder in. Th these were also double-sided um, so that you could make two exposures with one film holder. 
Mm -hmm. And oh yeah, uh, to adapt this to a film holder instead of a plate holder, you would simply leave the plate in there, and then if you put a piece of film in there, it's just at the right level. Okay. So then in the dark room, the plates or film would be developed um, using a tank that would hold a number of these metal holders. You put the glass into there, clip it in, and then there would be racks and racks of these that you would develop in a square developing tank. And the chemicals that they used back at the turn of the century for developing were uh, a little different than they are now. They were quite a bit more toxic. And um, so... It's the not the kind of thing you would dump down the drain today. Not exactly. No, not exactly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, once the negative was developed, it would be dried on a rack like that. A really cute little rack like that. And then once dried, um, it was put into a, cont a contact printing frame. The actual negative would be dropped right into here, and then there was a, I don't have it right with me, but the, uh, there was a spring-loaded back that would hold it flat uh, along with a piece of photographic paper. And uh, the reason it's called a contact print is that the negative was in contact with the print paper. And that way it was, it was held securely so that uh, it would be in sharp focus when the print was made. The uh, other way of making prints is to put the negative into an enlarger, which is like a projector, like that. And that would make it so that you could blow up the image. And that's called an enlargement as opposed to a contact print. But the negatives were so large back then that you could make a contact print, and most of the old postcards that you see would have been contact prints from large negatives. And then these lantern slides were made at, uh, in the studio by taking either the glass negative and putting it face to face with another piece of glass film like that, and uh, that, would, that would make a positive. And then um, that and a piece of plain glass were sandwiched together and taped. And they would have been a standard size so that they could fit into uh, the holder back there. Yeah. They could fit into a holder, which would go into a projector like this, this one. This is not complete. This is not complete. This is part of the museum's collection, and we've looked for the rest of it and can't seem to find it. Right. But uh, there is a bulb inside of here. Uh, the original lantern slides were actually lit by lanterns, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, just a, a true lantern and project a light through the negative and then up onto a screen or a wall or whatever. And this is a, where you could, just like the, the modern uh, slide projectors, mm -hmm. you can put two in and slide them back and forth and keep a slideshow going. Right. And so today we've substituted a, a more modern type projector. And uh, I tried to get this one working, but uh, I simply didn't have enough of the original pieces to, to make it work. So I had, this is from my collection, it's a two and a quarter inch slide projector which uh, takes a, uh, what's called a medium format slide and projects it. And it, uh, it does pretty well. It doesn't include all of the, of, the, um, of the information on the slide, but most of it's there. So it'll do. Okay. Then John also brought along an, uh, what, something that I'd never <laughs> seen before is a little folding screen. Mm -hmm. And it's, what arrow is this? This, this is, is from about 1910. Yes. Mm -hmm. And actually the, the sides fold in. It goes right down into a little box down here. Uh, I have never seen one of those. You yeah. said it's the only one you've ever seen it's also. It's the only one I've ever seen, yeah. Okay. And I think I picked it up at the bargain box. <laughs> a lot of... A lo <laughs> yeah. Lucky yeah. A lo customer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go there about every day. <laughs> yes. As a matter of fact, he brought something for me that he bought at the bargain box. So, uh, yes. Uh, should we see some slides? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, do we need to turn the lights off? Or I well, think no, uh, I think we've got it so that uh, okay. this is close enough. Okay, okay we're now. going to look at several different slides here. Uh, most of these are Parsons College. Uh, if you have some comments or questions or, or whatever, or help identification, yes. uh, that would be quite helpful because yeah. uh, some of these buildings are 
probably not in existence anymore. Uh, the one sample that we looked at had some real interesting features in it, I think, that we'll talk about a couple of things. So. And we'd, we'd also like help, just uh, even if you can't identify a building or a person, try to get an idea of where the picture was taken from. In other words, what angle, because uh, that would help in, in identifying, uh, yeah. Good. Okay. All right. Let's go. So uh, they'll be in pretty much random order uh, at the top because they're all mixed up. Um, however, some of them are identified with uh, with some writing here. And uh, Gene, yeah, why don't I go around behind? Yeah. You, uh, whoops. <laughs> some of these also because they are rephotographed. Uh, some of the uh, prints came out, some of the slides came out lighter than others. And so there's a varying quality, but you'll be able to see something. And, and this literally is the <laughs> box of slides right here, we just as we have it upstairs. And we yeah. have not looked through it. So we're going to see what's in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, lights. Some of these do have writing on them to uh, show uh, uh, 1907. Now this says this is a high school meet. Uh, does anybody know where the high school track field, football field was at this particular era? That's what I'm thinking. I think it was right around where the gymnasium is, or, or the field house. Okay, I think we can flip sure. through fairly yeah. quick here. I'll stack okay. them. Good. Oops, that's backwards, I'm sorry. Pretty much the same thing, another uh, track meet. I didn't realize, I thought these were Parsons College when we first looked at them. Well, some of them are. 1907. Yeah, the clothes and the hats. Yep. The hats are the thing that I was most interested in seeing. <laughs> Hmm, now that is an interesting one. Uh, another one of these that we have no idea of what's, what the event is and what's going on. But it is kind of interesting to see. Uh, this fella has a military jacket on. The hats look as though this is actually not all that long ago. Uh, this would be from uh, the teens. Now the one thing, the one thing that maybe there's no relation, but this gentleman here on this side looks an awfully lot like the John Williamson uh, photographer painting that we have up here. Mm -hmm. And I know he was quite an orator, and uh, I wonder if, if by some chance that might have been a talk or something like that. Mm -hmm. so. Could be. Mm -hmm. Now that's an early one. This is from the uh, 1870s or 80s. This an interesting a, hat. The front burnt, uh, <laughs> got the bent wood furniture over there. Yeah. yeah. Some of these do have writing on them to tell what they are, and there was a space to put writing yes. on them, mm -hmm. but uh, a great number of them have no, no identification whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Again, um, 1870s. Uh, possibly a group of students from Parsons. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's uh, an East Lake mirror in the back. And there's a portrait, see in the middle, is someone's holding a, a picture. And the fellow in the center of the back has a clerical collar, it appears. This is obviously a graduation. It's 
funny. I can tell by looking at this that this picture's backwards, that it's actually supposed to be this way. The people look, the people look better this way for some reason. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is another Fairfield High School track meet photo that's coming out. Finish of the one mile run. I see. And I thought that was kind of interesting to, to see the. Yes. A cool day. Cool day. Mm. This one says, "What's that? Hunk House? Huh? Johnson?" Pinkhouse, Pink Johnson, House. Reed, and Stevenson. Okay, so there you Those go. Those are the names that are written uh, on the side. Nice bent wood furniture again. And that's a uh, painted backdrop, a professional photographer's painted backdrop. Mm -hmm. This would be uh, eight, 1880s. Pinkhouse was the first name written, so I would assume that's on the left-hand side there. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. This one doesn't have any ID on it. Oh, now here's an interesting one. <laughs> yep. Yep, that's definitely Spanish influence there. Uh, no. That would be the fashion of the day. This is 1870s. This is uh, an interior picture of Ankeny Hall, I believe. Yes. I, I don't, I don't, can't read the first word, but it appears to be Ankeny no, Hall. No, it says Aldean. Aldean, but I, I'm not. Okay, so okay. it was a fraternity, but uh, it does say Ankeny on it also. Uh -huh. So. Hmm. It might be too light. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here, but uh, somebody's looking. That looks like a, is that a wagon or? I'm not sure. And this must have been something uh, to use for a sing-along. Yes. Just, just to give an example <laughs> of uh, everything that could have been done on these slides. Yeah. Well, there are some Fairfield photos included. This is the light oh, yes. tower in Central Park. And a print of this is upstairs. There's a print of this upstairs. As a matter of fact, this might be a photo. Uh-huh. Could very well be. There's the Carnegie Hall and uh, Ballard, yes. I don't know who we have here. There was no identification on the yeah, slide. Yeah, I think I, I'm going to clean off this. There. Yes, yeah, so there's a photo of him around somewhere. I just saw it upstairs. Somewhere around. His ears look like the younger man. Uh-huh. This photograph would have been taken in the 40s or early 50s. Let's, let's back up to this one. I have a question if anybody can, can help us a little bit. Uh, a little bit of explanation from anybody about the uh, monument that's in here. Mark, do you know something about that? That monument still stands, I believe. It's a grave of one of the Parsons people, supposedly. I, I have a couple of picture postcards that have that on, and I've not ever... Yeah, it's still okay. Mm -hmm. The inscription is still there. I no. guess... Oh, Oops, I have it's two. okay. <laughs> this one's very faint, but it shows some tennis players. Yeah. Those are 1890s to 1910 style. This is more fun looking at these than knowing what, uh, not knowing what's happening next. Oops, this one's backwards. Um, there you go, Republican office. Uh 
Yes. Dr. Hinnett. Oh, no, this is a theatrical thing. Those, those would be the characters' names. Yes. <laughs> we have a, a, a slight disagreement between the Democrats and Republicans here right mm -hmm. now. Here's an interesting prop. It's a cigar box and a scale. I have no idea. <laughs> this, it's a dram scale. Well, my first thought was that it might be a Beverling uh, cigar box, but it doesn't. Usually, that says that at the bottom of the, the top, if it is. So I'm not sure could, that it would be a Fairfield one. Could very well be also that this was a uh, spot advertisement in the middle of a slideshow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one is very faint, also. Mm -hmm. Is there, oh, uh, right in the middle, you can see what looks like a band shell. You see that? In the background? Just to the left of the, uh, the man's left. There's a little bit of a, either Chautauqua or the town square. Yeah. This might be a, another photograph of the same couple. Let's see. No, this is an automobile. Oh, yes. Oh, it actually, is. No, no, no. No, that's a uh, double. It's a wagon. That's not an automobile. That is the a carriage lights on the side are yeah. real nice. Very nice. Yeah. I think as we look at these photographs, it's uh, it shows the importance of in your own collections of photographs of family uh -huh. and whatever to to do identifications for the years to come. This is obviously also a theatrical production here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's see here. This is another very faint one. It just shows a snow scene. We don't get snow here in Iowa, do we? Uh, what would that have been? Probably would that have been Crow Creek? Yeah, this is probably fence, some kind of a style over it. Yeah. Perhaps to uh, the east of campus. This one I'm going to have to raise up a little bit here. Hold it. There we go. Not much to go on. Looks like a stadium. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a ball diamond down ball below diamond, the way it looks. Yes. Could this be that? That's a post. It's a fence uh, post. I think it's a reflection of a fence off, son of a, off of a fence post. Yeah. Could that be, uh, what's the park that's just to the east of the high school? Waterworks South Park? No, no, southeast. Oh, uh, southeast. Forest Park? Forest Park, could be. Oh, I doubt it. I doubt it. I think that uh, came later. Okay. So I would. Uh huh. We don't know whose house that is. I would guess it was one of the houses surrounding campus, maybe. Could a, be. Uh, This is a picture of an envelope, and I'm not sure yeah. what the significance of this is. Brattleboro. Brattleboro, Vermont is the stamp. And uh, Pittsfield, Massachusetts, I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, no, G O. G O. I N G is what I no. got. No, no, no. It does, but uh, huh. just some odd little scenario. That's a pro professional photographer took this, and you can see that this is a paper print that has a a, a paper mat around it. So that's what this slide was. So a lot of these slides were actually Tate used are actually created by taking a photo of another photo. Yeah, another graduation here. There's no indication when or who or anything. Uh, by going back to the annual? Uh, we could, yeah. Well, very possibly a lot of these photographs could be researched, and that sure. means uh, this is uh, possibly yeah. the ladies in a graduate, or a sorority <laughs> perhaps. No. 
That, see, the, there's a glass gun now. What's the deal with a glass gun? Candy, candy. container, perhaps. Candy container. Uh -huh. uh, it's interesting, they did make hand gestures and the funny little things above sure. people's heads at those times, yeah. too. And the wallpaper, dig the wallpaper. What is the photograph, what is the painting in the background? Can we, get, uh, can we see any of that? No, I okay. can't get any lower. Whoops. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> That's as much as I can get on there. There you go. See the glare on the uh, left side of the photograph is uh, from from the paper print there. Interesting that they interesting that they have an East Lake painted backdrop. You see that the spindles. And again, m many of these slides have the place to put writing on them for identification, and they just, and they just are not identified. That's right. The young man in the center, the slide of his eyeglasses, is back to the side of his window. They're much like these. Uh, Actually, Johnson. no, they're, they're, those are older. These are the styles you're talking about. Mm -hmm. These are the ones I use for reading. <laughs> Okay. Well, we have one more ladies' picture, and I'm going to skip on some of the uh, group pictures that we have because many of them are much the same as. Uh, uh, but uh, it's mm -hmm. fun to look at these for the hairstyles and the, the, the clothing little, and the little hair ribbons. And uh, obviously, all of these ladies had white blouses on, so it was yeah. probably some club. Uh, 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 right. This would have been Edwardian time. Yeah, 1890s or just. Uh, this is an interesting. Again, we have glare on this, but somebody's having a golf game there. That's an early shot of the country club. Uh -huh. That is an early shot of the country club. I see that published. Uh, the golf clubs look extra long to me. Yes, they uh, are. I'm sure they were wood, sh wood shafted, but they're That's quite right. long. Mm -hmm. Oh, now this one says view from Franklin to Parsons. Okay, this is there is a photograph I, that I've seen before. This is looking off the top of Franklin School. That's uh, where Howard Park is now, looking toward the northwest, north northwest. This particular yeah. street I think is Second Street, as far as I can gather. And I've tried to identify some of the other houses in some of the photographs. There's a really large house in the distance. And I've not been able to figure out what house it is in looking at them. It was pointed out this knob, this this top on is part of the Franklin School. Mm -hmm. No, that's right. None of the trees are very large. Now we're trying to figure out what this is that the fella is holding up in the middle. It, it could be a sorority, I mean, a, a fraternity paddle or some kind, or... It looks sort stick. of like a hockey stick, but I'm yeah. sure it's not. It's a theatrical production, from what I can gather. Yeah, these are definitely costumes. The, uh, the ladies down in the lower left corner are refugees or something. Babushkas. Yeah. This next one is a patriotic scene, and I didn't look to see whether there was any writing on that one. And now there's a thing here that says the Singing Scouts. The Singing Scouts. That's World War I time. Uh, uniforms. One of the things we didn't discuss, John, was what era these slides are from, when they first yeah. began. The, uh, the glass slides would have come about, uh, the, ver the very first ones would have been in the 1860s. They were called uh, magic lantern slides back then, and they would have been not photographs, but hand drawn and hand painted. And uh, then, uh, let's have it stick another slide in here so we have something to look at. It says football 1903 duplicate. Um, 
So the, uh, the first photographic glass slides would have been around the 1890s. And what we're seeing here are ones that were produced between 1910 and 1930. Uh, the, some of the prints would have been older than that, but then when the actual glass slides were made was between 1910 and 1930. This is really light, but I, I'm curious to see it's what it same, is. Same, same one uh, that same, we were looking we at saw before, before, except we can see now, as I suspected, that it is a wagon because there's a wheel. See that? See the wheel? So they're looking into or over a wagon. Or helping her in or out of the wagon. <laughs> She's on the outside and he's on the inside. Now, what's that on the left? Is that a handbrake? I would guess that this is a handbrake. And... Uh, if we could enlarge that enough, we might be able to see a, a, to read, the writing that, read the writing that's on to tell whether it might be a, a turning wagon works or something similar to that. Mm -hmm. Here's a, another, looks like a theatrical piece well, here. The, the professional posters lots of times have this laid on the head. True. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here we go. Human flies. This was a fad between, uh, in the 20s essentially. Uh, suddenly, so, uh, everyone was climbing buildings. This appears to be what? Uh, Fairfield Hall or? Uh, no. Um, Foster? Foster. Foster Hall it appears to be. Looks like those uh, bridges were made there for a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> This is another posed photograph, but I... It's very light, it's, very it's hard very to light, see. But again, it's probably a theatrical. Either that or a... Um, it's a it appears to be... A, it looks like a fondue fork, actually, but uh, there's a metal container. Yeah, it's, it's very hard to tell what's going on there. This is a newer slide, the way it looks. Um, might be that somebody can recognize who some of the people are in there. There's that same man. Yes. Yes. This looks like it was taken in the, from the collars. Yeah. From the collars, it looks as though this is the 1920s, but uh, yes, that's what I would guess. 1920s. But it could be that the clothes are much older than the. Uh, this appears to be a campus scene with some uh, guys about yeah, campus. Oh, a tennis Foster. team. Uh, one with the tennis yeah, racket. Yeah, one with the tennis racket. And that's Foster Hall in the background. And uh, to the left there, what one is that? Is that Ballard? Back of Ewing. Well, this is dated 1898, and it has, uh, I'm not sure of the writing that's on there. Uh, something, Jacksonville, Florida, it says. I don't know what, <laughs> oh, it's a, uh, yeah, military. There are a couple this of these military photos here. Spanish-American War time, 1898. I'm not sure what this is doing in here. I don't either. This is another one of a... Could be... What, Mount, uh, Heaton Captain, who, whoever... The captain is named Heaton in this photograph. Hiram Heaton? Hiram Heaton is the captain. And this, it says... It says Washington on here. I don't know. Another box that's in here is uh, some hand-colored slides that show signs, uh, s scenes of the Holy Land. There's a whole large box of these, nearly a hundred plates. This is a uh, commercial production, actually. It's, a, it's a, like the National Geographic of its time. Um, the National Geographic did exist at this time also, but uh, this would have been a, uh, 
a church slideshow to show scenes from the Holy Land. There, this particular bunch of slides is marked faculty. So now we're into a, a bunch that, that do have some general designation. So there was just a, an inv invocation. <laughs> 1877. <laughs> Interesting. And yes. out of the group of about eight slides, this is the only one that I see that has a photo of actual people. Faculty in there. 1907, it says. And then these are marked in a general heading programs. Okay, there are names here. A Toma, two Tomas, a Howard, and uh, it says Harvard University on here. Maybe uh, there were some graduates. Down below, you see, Sitting down or on the, in the first row? Ben says that this person right here is the Toma. Above him. This one is the is Toma. A toma. Uh -huh. This is Clara and Alice Scott and one other name that I can't read. Uh, Clara Scott, Alice Scott, and it says, it says mated. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> That's a painted backdrop, and they're on a swing. This is Miss Snook in class. Snook, Miss Snook. S-N-O-O-K. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. <laughs> This says Mar Mary Marcy and something Cunningham. Cunningham. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and that's a fur collar that she's wearing and a muff. The next one is named James Turner. James Turner. Wow. <laughs> Custodian at the college. This is Letts and Tappert. Uh, how we going here? Ha! A little wheelbarrow. This next one is Miss Cottle and Amy Hinkhouse. The next one is Heaton, Fuller, and Jenkins. And John, I think you'll <laughs> like these hats. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I wear a hat like this when I go to the Civil War reenactments. Yeah. Uh, Heaton, Fuller, and Jenkins. Or Junkins. It was J. Junkins. Heaton, Fuller, and Jenkins. There's only three names and four guys. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. The next one is Roy Loudon and Peter Merrifield, I think the name was. Yeah, Merrifield. Ha! Parsons letters. This. The one on the left is Tom Loudon's father. Mm -hmm. That would have been one of those green shaded lamps there. This next one is a quartet. It must have been a uh, musical quartet. Yeah, um, it's hard to read. Mer 
Oh boy. Moore is one of them. King McJunkin and M I R something. I can't. It's very hard to read the hen scratching that's on there. Those are 1880s, 90s styles of ties with the wing collars. We're into a, a group of slides marked classes, and that's all that it says about them. Oops, this is backwards here. YWCA stand by by of us. So some kind of a. Uh, appears to be a, a bake sale or something. <laughs> this next is the class of 1880. This would have been taken from the yearbook. <laughs> Oriental fell on the left there. This is the class of 1892. A bit bigger. What hall is that? I don't recognize. Uh, possibly Ankeny Hall, but. Ankeny. Is that fella? Huh. This is a 1905 photograph, the class of 1880, and. Uh, uh, Parsons is in a mental general. General L. B. Parsons. Mm. That would be, am I correct, the son of the founder of Parsons College? Is that, I think. Is that a stone on campus? Yes. I think so. Is that his grave that's on campus? I don't know. It's it would be the right time, right time period, yes. Class of 1894 is third year academy students. Parsons College Academy was a high school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll let you read this one, John. Okay. This is the last day for the class of 1908 as juniors. It says Alpenfield, Al Al what's that? I have a group that are clubs and organizations. Uh, this is the Spinster Club, I think. That's what that says. Is that what it says? Yeah, that's what, that's it says. what it looks like to me. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> I'm going to turn that around right reading here. Is that a megaphone? I believe that's a megaphone she's leaning on. Ben, can you tell us a little bit what all dying it was meant? All dying hall is that? Do you know anything about that? Okay, it's a literary literary group. Yeah, we saw this one before. Right, and then this was a group about 19, 1893 or 1894. This is the This says Elsevier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got a daring dress off of the top here. It's bold stripes. Anything else?
<laughs> this is a music class with professor, professor Schonert, I believe it was, or something similar to that. Schovert, Schonert, Schovert, Schonert. This one is labeled the first band. Is there a question mark he's holding up? He's <laughs> oh yeah. Well, if we had the spinsters, here is the uh, stag club. All right. <laughs> Starched collars and all. Okay, there are a few here uh, theatrical, and I think we've probably, we might have seen some of these here in the past. 1899. All dressed in white in that one, too. Mm -hmm. It's a very dark uh, slide here. Probably a Greek uh, or a Roman. Okay, we've seen some athletics here previously. These are all athletics coming up, I think. That's I what it's in. Football at 1903. I hope there's some baseball in here. They couldn't hold smiles long enough to get the photo. That's right. part of and the problem. Also, back then, uh, uh, photographs were made to resemble more uh, more paintings than what we know of uh, snapshots. This was 1894 football team, and it mm -hmm. said on the slide the first year for football was 1893. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're numbered, and there's some identification someplace. Yeah. But, and uh, also, this is a photograph of a what's called a half-tone print. You can see the dots in the background. Is a, those are uh, uh, as a yearbook or a newspaper print would be made. So football player M. Letts. M. Letts. 93. And 1893 would have been the first year, uh, according to what this said on that one slide. Mm -hmm. I think this is probably a football stadium. Nice track. One mile run. One mile run. And the date is cut off of there, unfortunately. Oh, uh, 1907. Okay. We'll let you figure out what they are doing in this particular photo. It's a discus. Discus throw, yes. Now that's uh, M. That would be from a different college then, right? Right. That which one? Minneapolis? <laughs> Pardon me? Mor mor morning sign. Morning side. Morning side. Possibly morning side. Yeah. This is Pan and Parsons, 1916, a track meet. Seems like there's a lot of track uh, photos mm -hmm. and not much. This. Uh, Yes, that, that, that it's old heating plant. So, uh, and that would be uh, Ewing Hall in the background there. So this probably would have been in the range of the field house, present day right. field house. Right, right. That's, uh, must be just east of uh, the drive. Yeah. 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 Right, it's down yes. by where yes. the it's field where the house was, was in that particular no, area. The parking, no, the, the, um, the field house would be to the oh, right. that's right. Yeah, so this would be the parking lot now. There's a hollow there. This has some identification, so I thought it might be a good one to look at. Mm -hmm. Annual home, Alumni Field, 1908. One by 1908. And this, <laughs> there's a typewritten little footnote. It says, who won the meet in 1907, question mark. <laughs> this is the actual, an actual football game. Uh, does not say what year it was. Max it's interesting to look, interesting to see the helmets or lack of, I think. No, almost. there's a few helmets there. Yeah. And there's one person, there's one person in the stands. 
<laughs> they ran up and down the field, they didn't sit in it. Uh-huh. That's right. <laughs> this is another football photo that has a nice building picture in the background. Uh, I think it's over on oh, the yeah. side, John. Is that, uh, this is the way it goes. Yes, so that's B. Ballard. That nice car in the background. So this would be in the teens. It's interesting to see in the background we have a combination of cars and horses, yeah. both in the same photo. Sure. Uh, over here on the left-hand side, we horses. have the horses and then also the cars. Yeah, a, right. Football, 1904. There's, again, Ballard Hall. Look at that huge hat on the left and on the right, too. What is that thing the fellow in the center is wearing around his neck? Is that some kind of a... <laughs> yeah, it appears to be some kind of a guard. Maybe it's a chest protector or something. Okay, I think we get into some building photographs now. Uh, Just take one of those. A tree. These are just general campus scenes, I believe. Yeah. Crispy fifth. What's that on the on the left? I don't know what that is. Oh. We have one here that has some coloring on it. Yes. Hand painted. So that's Carnegie on the right, and uh, Ewing on the left, and Ballard in the background. In, in the boardwalk there. Probably looking uphill from what used to be the south entrance, I think, to the campus. Yeah, probably. it'd be, well, yeah, this is actually right at the, right near the heating plant. Looking up. It's Ballard Hall and one that I don't recognize, a couple of houses, and then Carnegie on the right. That we're looking at what would be the present location of the student union. Yeah, down. down. No, uh, right beyond Carnegie is, uh, we're looking northeast. And uh, so. So that that house on the, uh, the on the right would be where the student union is now. The house straight back. Mm -hmm. We have a winter scene of campus here. Uh, I think there was a man down on the left hand. Oh, I thought maybe they were shoveling. I'm just looking. Some pretty good snow drifts. And a big thumbprint right in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Okay. Huh. So this is, oops, this is backwards. <laughs> Occasionally they put the labels on there wrong. That same thing. So that's Hen Mansion or Ewing Hall, Ballard, and then Carnegie, and then whatever house that was back there where the student union is now. This, this one interested me. I'm not sure what it is. It looks like a creek bed of some sort. Oh, uh, this oh, would be to the, to the west of campus. That's Crow Creek going up yeah. to the overpass and, of the and railroad. That's the, the railroad right of Rock Island. And somebody's shooting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The person on the lower right-hand side is, looks, appears as if he's shooting, shooting. a rifle uh, or a gun down toward the water. Either that or fishing. Could be fishing. Or fishing, perhaps. Almost no trees. Yes. This appears to be a picnic of some sort, uh, or a, no, not really a picnic, is it? 
That's funny. This fellow appears to be dressed in drag. See that? <laughs> See, the, he's got it's hairy legs. With a, yeah, with a suitcase sitting over on the right That's hand side. That's really funny. Yeah. I could have been a, a warm up for a tra yeah. track meet. Okay. Uh, it's indicated that's the same fence as was around the track. This is another view of the Rock Island uh, Railroad Bridge. And there is somebody under the bridge there. Uh, see that in the shadows? I think this is, it says the Hildreth home, and I'm not sure what that is. Oh, that's the one on campus that, uh, isn't it? Isn't that the same one that was just, that's just beyond the Carnegie Hall? This is the home of Dr. Parsons. This is a nice hand-colored one. Yes, the, the other one does say uh, broad, one says Dr. Parsons' home and one says Broadview. And where was this located? North of Fairfield, North of Fairfield Hall. Hall is what we hear. This may be the same uh, photo of that. Yes, this one is same house. And then this, this next one is, uh, I Oops. think, the only photo we have of the heating plant. <laughs> well, there was that other one in the background. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nice brick chimney. They've got that metal one now. I'm surprised as these are labeled, this appears to be the only view of Trustee Jim, and I would have thought that would have, there would have been a sizable amount of... Uh, photographs of this those. This is backwards. <laughs> there we go. The trusty gymnasium. <laughs> yeah. Mark Schaefer says it looks like a Loudon ventilator on it, and very possibly so. Mm -hmm. Then we have some pictures of uh, chap the chapel. This is a nice hand-painted one here. I believe that that particular view is on a postcard. I yes. think I have that postcard. Yeah. Gardens there. Yeah. In the cloister. Mm -hmm. That's from the south. It, either construction or reconstruction because uh, <laughs> it rapidly started to fall apart. Slightly blurred. That's from the southeast. The next one's also a colored. It says Bible Building. So the original name of uh, Parsons Hall was the Bible Building. Mm -hmm. Now we have some uh, views of Ballard Hall. Yeah, I don't think so, because uh, this one has a huge vein running through it. This was not the. Let's see. So that appears to be Hen Mansion on the right, and Carnegie on the left. This is from the east, looking basically west. Another one of Ballard. A nice shot. That was a beautiful building. That came down in what, 78? It was uh, still here when I was uh, in college here, but it I'm was. I'm not condemned. sure what year it was. 77 demolished. or 78 it came down because uh, it was still here when I was going to school. 
These are the looking straight south. Uh, the library is that yeah, what the Carnegie are? Hall? Yeah, Carnegie Library. There's another one from the southwest, looking east. Different season. It's a very photogenic building. Now we have some photos of um, Foster Hall. This is the inside of Foster Hall. Yeah. Appears to be a laboratory. Or I would guess a laboratory or a science room of some sort. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> All sorts of stuffed animals and yikes. <laughs> Here's another shot of that same hall with the physics machines and scales. The next one's a nice view of the exterior. Mm -hmm. Foster Science Hall. Oops. Now we have a few of Fairfield Hall. Huh, where's that taken from? That's that what it says, from. Fairfield Hall. Mm, so that would be, I'm trying to identify what else is there. Carnegie would be off the right, or is it? This is an old photograph here. Yeah. Hmm. Whoops. <laughs> Try again. There you go. Mathematics. Physics. Geometry. <laughs> this is a nice color photo of, oh, the, yes. of the exterior of Fairfield Hall. No, wait, just a second. Is the observatory up there somewhere? It's across the, the across the on the curve of Merrill and Second. Ah, okay, the observatory because was at the corner of Second and Merrill. Um, Is that right? The southwest quadrant of the intersection. Because mm -hmm. the old telescope had been stored up in uh, Foster Hall when I was a student here. These are Ewing Hall or Han Mansion. There's Ballard. Is this backwards? Could be backwards. Is this backwards? Yeah, that's... Is that correct? There it should be. These have little red stickers on them that are supposed to be the way that they are shown, but some of them are wrong. That one is correct. Uh, Fairfield Hall is uh, to the left there. Yeah. This is a nice photo of uh, showing the top of the building. The widow's walk there. This is from the southwest of the northeast. Now we have some of the Ankeny Hall. Which I never knew. Yeah. So this is on this, pretty much on the site of Ballard Hall, but a little bit south, correct? That was the original, the first 1870s building. That was the original Parsons building. This is an in interesting and interior photograph. Of Ankeny? Is that Ankeny Hall? It appears to be more like bar height, but no. But I'm not sure what it is. Yes, it's Ankeny. It has the uh, the lunettes. Okay. Very pretty windows. Mm -hmm. 
Seems to me I've seen one of those pews around town. Where's this one? Is this in? Uh, this is still in the what is designated to be Ankeny Hall. Okay, so this is very early physics lab here. Where was the Ankeny Hall? Um, it was just to the east of uh, Ewing Hall. Okay, to finish up, we have a large number of slides which are marked generally socializing, I think. <laughs> this is from um, the 20s. Yes. And so these might be as much fun to look at as, as the buildings and others. I recognize that building. Which one is that? Fairfield? We'll, we'll go through these and, and uh, just pick band. out a few of these to see as we finish up. <laughs> this is really fun. Some of these are rather classic photos. Rather dark, but uh, interesting. <laughs> Clowning around. Oops, this is backwards here. Now, what does the lettering in the background say? There's um, some sort of banner. Sir? Interesting. This is, a, this is an interesting photo with the little fur collars. <laughs> uh, some kind of a picnic going on here in the mud, <laughs> camping out with a big coffee pot. Campus day. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. Okay, they were talking that this might be a campus day where they went around and cleaned up all over campus. It does like, appear to be a coffee pot in the center, so, yes. and a picnic basket. Right. Oh, this is nice. Uh, this has a 1933. That, that will, and uh, some, some kind of a yardstick? Is that, uh, why is he holding a A surveyor's stake, surveyor perhaps. Stake. Uh -huh. The 1933 license plate. Okay, we're told by Fred, it's Fred Flinchbaugh, it's a 29 Chevrolet. Mm -hmm. huh. Wash tub and... Uh, Isn't that funny? That's hilarious. If you like the socks and shoes there, you'll like the next photo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> this is from the 30s. Look at that satin blouse on the left. <laughs> he says too Lee much Gobble skin. just said there was too much skin in that photo. There, that's better, isn't it? Yeah, same angle. <laughs> On the left-hand side, we can see something come. Oh, Danielson Company, maybe, or um, I'm not sure what that would be. A Ma billboard in the background. The white lettering says the majority. The prices are for. Huh. I don't know what building that is. It'd be from the 20s, late 20s, yeah. This bright sunny day there. <laughs> hey, we can thumb through these fairly fast, John. Yeah. And, and um, okay. on a moonlight. <laughs> on a moonlight. So 
something. Oh, this is, we've seen this one before. This is that uh, play. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. the same in, in another location different, in the grouping here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this one says, oh, this is, no, this is another one with a couple of Tomas in there. 1910. The fellow on the left center is a Toma. Yeah. I don't know what building that is, do you? And we've seen this one, something like this one before, too. Reading outdoors. I don't know what the significance of the next one, but we have a railroad tracks in. Walking to Bernhardt, class of 1913. Okay, it's walking to Bernhardt, and the Bernhardt was a depot east of Fairfield out toward uh, about halfway between here and Batavia. Or west of Fairfield, I'm, I'm sorry. West of Fairfield between Fairfield and Batavia. See the shadow of the photographer to the left there. This one says, Seniors on Alumni Field. Here's looking at you. <laughs> Yeah. At least it's not a galatine. A what? Uh, a guillotine. A guillotine. guillotine, yeah. This is an interesting photo. Huh. A little hay ride there. It must with have been an early hay ride. Yeah, with a little bit of hay on there. I'll just put that one up. This one says two Parsons detectives and question mark. <laughs> nice little carriage in the background there. Eh? Um, another wild night in the frats there. <laughs> another seniors on alumni field, but I like the bleachers shot, I think it's uh Interesting to look at it again. Mm -hmm. and there are some individual photos, and I think the name might be on that, who it is. Leggett. Ruth Leggett. Ruth Eleanor Leggett. Oops, ooh, nice catch there. Senior breakfast at Marie's. Does anyone know where Marie's? At least it wasn't Buckboard Annie's. Senior mascot and trainers. Does anybody have an idea why a cow would be a mascot? <laughs> And the ladies do have the, the, the caps on. Yeah, the mortarboards. This one says, just in Brighton, May 27, 1907. This might be fun to put up just uh, the Parsons song. Does anyone know the tune? Betty and Lee, would you, would you mind singing it? Uh, <laughs> Fred, you could join in that too, couldn't you? Parsons, don't you see? I'm sure you can't hear it on FPAC, but we did have a little bit of a rendition by Benny Swingles, chimed in by a few of others. 
Well, this is pretty much all of the slides that we have. We've sorted out through some of them in the past. There are some others that are pretty much duplicates of the same thing. John, one of the things that you didn't do was to put a negative in here to show what oh, a yes. negative looks like in, in, in relation to a positive that we've been looking at okay, to so show I, what the difference is. Let's see. I'm trying to find. Uh, might as well put this one in. Oops, no. The problem is that the negatives that I have are much larger than the slides, and so it kind of cuts off. You'll so, see some trees. So, so as we put light through a negative, then everything is just reversed it's to reversed. what we've been looking at. So we've actually been looking at a positive, like a photograph. Right. But this, this would have been the actual glass plate that was in the camera and took the picture on site. I'll show you what's at the bottom of the photograph. It'll look, it'll appear upside down. It's sheep. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a uh, reversal setting on that camera? <laughs> well, that pretty much concludes our slideshow. We do have a lot of Parsons artifacts in the museum, uh, and including our Parsons room over here. Uh, from time to time in the future, we will be having successive Parsons programs uh, celebrating the, the history of Parsons and some of the things that have been going on. Right now, tentative, tentatively in May, we're looking at a show and tell thing with uh, Parsons College artifacts where people can bring in stories, artifacts, things that they have from the university or from the college, I guess it was, uh, that they can tell about and reminisce a little bit about the past. And right now we're tentatively planning for that for the first Sunday afternoon in May and I think that'll be a really uh, interesting program. Uh, in the future, I think John will be joining us again and doing some programs possibly on letterpress printing, uh, another one on uh, photographs, uh, particularly Fairfield photographers and the different methods they use to make uh, certain types of images. And so we'll have other uh, programs like that that John will be involved in too. Uh, for uh, the Carnegie Historical Museum, I guess, this is Gene Lutke and John Stim Simpson was very nice to join us today. And thank you and we hope to see you next month. Do we want to take a few questions? Or? Right. Does anybody have any questions?